guys, welcome to a brand new series on my channel. I am so happy to introduce to you Style Revival. In this series, in each episode, I am going to pull inspiration from a historical period and try to recreate a modern day head to toe look using the trends and kind of beauty standards from that period. So I'm basically going to take a little bit of history and implement it into modern day life. So you can think of this as your kind of his history inspired head to toe styling guide. My goal is to create wearable looks for those of you that love history, would like to have some elements of historical looks in your day-to-day -day life, but still want the looks to be wearable. Now, of course, the word wearable is very personal and something that may be wearable to the one may not be wearable to the other. And of course, also some periods in history are just more compatible with um, modern fashion than others. But I'm going to try my best to create something that I myself would definitely wear out. And today is the first episode and I'm kicking off with a period in history that is very popular and it is the Regency era. Now I personally think the Regency era is so beloved because it is the backdrop of um, Jane Austen novels which we all love. I mean come on let's be honest here who doesn't love Jane Austen novels? <laughs> And I personally also think it is a very interesting period in history. Regency era fashion is a direct response to the extravagance of the 18th century. The Regency era was in the late 18th and beginning um, early 19th century, kind of the turn of the century there. It is a full 180 turn in the completely opposite direction. So people are abandoning the overly decorated and artificial looks of the 18th century and going for a very natural, very understated, feminine, soft, but kind of just underdressed style. So one very interesting and unique thing is the disappearance of the corsets. There is a type of bodice that was still worn, but none of the tight lacing up that was done before and after actually. The corset makes a comeback after this period, which is quite odd if you ask me, but hey. And the silhouette of dressing just changes completely. So we'll get into fashion later, um, but let me just start with the makeup and hair. So makeup in the Regency era, as everything else, is also a complete opposite of the 18th century makeup, which was pretty much just a full layer of paint. Um, just painting a whole new face on. Regency makeup is very, very natural looking. Wearing makeup was actually discouraged, um, but nonetheless we wouldn't wear it. I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a period in history where women actually didn't wear makeup, even though they have many times been told not to. But for my Regency inspired modern day look, I'm going to start off with a layer of foundation. Women in the Regency period would have worn a colored powder as opposed to the white powders of the 18th century, but I'm just going to go for a full layer of foundation because that's what we do nowadays and I think it looks good. So <laughs> foundation and concealer it is, I'm going to blend it in. It doesn't need to be a shade lighter than my own skin color because this period with all its glorification of natural looks was actually one where the beauty standard wasn't the paler the better. Women were actually encouraged for the first time to go outside, get some fresh air and get a little bit of sunshine on their faces. Getting tan and freckled still was a no-no, but getting a little bit of a healthier look was definitely encouraged. So we can go with our own shade of foundation. And then I'm going to powder it off, of course, because it makes the foundation last longer, but also because powder was used in the Regency era. So I am going to keep the rest of the makeup really natural. So for my eyebrows, I am just going to take a little bit of clear brow gel to brush them into shape, make them look nice and groomed, but not overly done. Luckily, we like a quite natural brow nowadays as well, so I can just keep my eyebrows the way they are. And for my eye makeup, I am just going to apply a little bit of mascara. Women actually discovered eyeliner and mascara around this period because of uh, contact with the Orient, where of course, People had been wearing eyeliner, heavy eyeliner and kind of black paints around the eyes for centuries. The concept of wearing black around the eyes dribbled through to Western Europe a little bit, but it was very much frowned upon because the ideal was natural beauty. And in the beginning stages of black kind of eye makeup, it was really hard to apply in a way that looked natural. So you could usually see it sitting on the face and that just wasn't considered a good look back then. But I am going to apply a little bit of mascara just because uh, looks without mascara look a little bit strange to us nowadays. So one item of cosmetics that was worn quite openly is rouge. 
Rouge is something that comes back all throughout history and it was worn in the Regency era as well. If you look at paintings of ladies from that era, you can see very clear, beautiful, kind of youthful pink glows on their cheeks. So I am going to apply a bright pink blush onto my cheeks as well. And I'm going to go a little bit heavier than I maybe may have gone on my regular makeup, but not too over the top, of course. We're trying to keep it a little bit modern here. So lip rouge was also worn by ladies. So I'm going to take a lipstick and I'm going to apply it in a very natural looking way. So I'm actually going to take some onto my finger and just dab it into my lips to create more of a stain-like effect rather than a painted on lipstick look. And there is your makeup look completely done. A very natural Regency inspired look. So let's move on to the hair. <laughs> now I may have gotten a little bit carried away with the hair, but I just love Regency hair. And I actually personally think it is quite wearable the way it is. So I have toned it down, modernized it a little bit, but it is quite authentic Regency still. So what we're going to start is make a center parting. And I'm going to gather all of the hair that isn't my bangs into a ponytail at the back of my head. When I'm doing this, I'm going to try and keep a little bit of that center parting in the front. This is a very Regency typical thing to do. So when I have my ponytail, I am going to pull out some uh, of those short kind of wispy pieces of hair that you always have growing around the perimeter of your hairline, or at least I do. <laughs> I'm going to use these to for my little curls later on. So when that is done, I'm going to take a few strips of hair extensions just because my own hair is really fine. You don't need to do this if you have a little bit um, more hair than I do. And I'm just going to wrap these hair extensions around my ponytail to create a little bit more volume and fullness. And then I am going to take a little sock bun. I have several videos on sock bun if you're not familiar with the technique, but uh, I'm going to use this to create a sock bun. So I'm going to pull this sock over my ponytail. I'm going to pull my ponytail through the sock and then I'm going to spread my hair around the sock to create a nice bun and then pop a hair elastic over that to secure it. And then I'm going to take all the hair that is remaining, pull it down, and I'm going to divide this into three sections. And then I'm going to take a ribbon. Ribbons were one of the accessories that were used in hair a lot during the Regency era, especially by younger ladies. So I am going to use one as well to decorate my hair for a little bit more of a modern look. You can just leave out the ribbon. Granted, it does make it look a little bit more period. <laughs> so I'm going to fasten the ribbon to the center of my bun, just using a bobby pin. And I'm going to guide the two sides of the ribbon over the two outer strands of my braid, and then just braid my hair all the way down to the ends and tie it off with a hair elastic. When my braid is done, I'm going to wrap it around my bun and secure it all around with bobby pins. And then I'm just going to tuck the ends of my braid underneath the bun as well, making sure to leave the ribbons hanging out on the bottom of my bun. Now I decided to wrap these ribbons around my head for a very Regency type of look. Um, I later on <laughs> then decided to take them back down because this made it look way too period and not modern anymore at all. But hey, it is a nice touch. I really like the look. So if you're up for it, definitely wear the ribbons. I think they're gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I took it down because we're trying to go modern here. <laughs> so now with my bangs and all the little pieces of hair that are still hanging out, I am just going to take a very thin curling iron and curl these to create the typical Regency curly bangs. And when that is done, I am going to pull them apart and make them a little bit looser to, again, create a little bit less of a rigid kind of um, Regency look and more of like a flowy, modern, curly bang look, which I think you can totally get away with. <laughs> this is so significant for the Regency era look that I personally think you can't leave this out. For even more of a modern look, just pull your bangs back into the bun as well. Now moving on to the outfits. The most iconic thing about Regency era fashion is the high waistline and uh, capped sleeves. As opposed to the big poofy skirts of the previous era, Regency era clothing is very light, uh, practical, it's easy for women to move around in, uh, except for maybe the arms which were constricted by the capped sleeves to create more of an elegant, kind of dainty movement. But the rest of the body was quite free to move around. The Regency era fashion is very much inspired by ancient Greece and um, the fashion that they saw on ancient Greek statues. Through that, the fashion became very kind of light and airy and flowy, and many of the fabrics were actually so light that they were see-through. It was quite a daring era in fashion, I guess you could say. It was mostly for younger kind of fashion forward women to wear this see-through trend, but it was definitely there. So if you like, you can wear very light materials for this trend, but 
be sure to focus on that high waistline which is, which sits just underneath the breasts and of course the poofy capped sleeves which are so iconic for this period. I am wearing a cream colored blouse here which has those iconic features and it ha even has a bow in the back which was really iconic for the period as well. Also try to stick to light colors like white, creams, pastels. Those were really popular colors back then. It was the whole kind of natural no excess decoration type of thing that they were going for. Lighter colored fabrics definitely give off more of a Regency vibe. So you could wear a top similar to mine with, for example, some light colored jeans or a light skirt like I'm wearing here. Just make sure to keep the color as well as the fabric nice and light. So Regency shoes are actually really, really similar to modern day ballet flats. So you can totally just wear some cream or pastel colored ballet flats or even white if you dare to go for white shoes. <laughs> and there is your modern adaptation of a Regency era look completely done. So now you can totally rock Regency to school or work. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video guys and I hope you like the concept of my new series. I have so many episodes of this plan so I really hope you do like it. I personally love it and I cannot wait to get started on more episodes. If there is any particular era in fashion or a specific look that you would like me to pull to the modern times then do be sure to leave a comment below and I will browse through and look for inspiration. If you like this video as always don't forget to give a thumbs up I really appreciate it and subscribe to my channel to stay updated of all of my new style revival videos. If you would like to support me on Patreon I will have a link in the description box. Thank you so much for all of my patrons I really appreciate you guys. I will have another video here that you may also enjoy you can go watch next. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!